Enroll in Hustlers University today and beat the price increase. You can still get in at $200 versus $399, which will be the price increase on Monday. You will also get not one, but two shirts in this deal. Act now, save yourself a ton of money. What's going on, football? Uh, as promised, because people was like, where's the graphic? Where's the graphic? It was supposed to be in another video, but it is in this video. And this isn't 100% accurate. Um, I made YouTube partner in November 2010. And for some reason, I can't go all the way back to 2009. But it still illustrates the point. As uh, you see at the beginning, this is like not even 200 views a day. It, it's going, this didn't really start happening until... 2010 now what's going on with this is and the whole point of this graphic is when I started cussing which was 2009 so for virtually 14 15 months now you know I had a blog the urban pack rat I was getting traffic to the blog and I was getting traffic from YouTube to the blog so as you see not a lot of views from November 18th to January 6th 2011 not a lot of views so you know when people like hey glending you should stop cussing you are turning people off this is this is almost this is a year in because it started august 6 2009 so august 6 2010 was the first full year and this is shortly after that just a few months and now let me show you the good stuff okay this is from November 18th, 2010, up until now, a few days ago, 2.45. Now understand, this isn't everything. This isn't, but the views were so minute <laughs> that, you know, it still illustrates. But this just goes to show you, it took a long time for me to get the views I have. And understand, if you're comparing me to the business YouTubers or the reseller YouTubers, I am at the top of the heat. If you compare me to gamers, comedy, dating advice, hair tutorials, many of those people do in a month what I did in four going on five years. So, but the whole point is this graphic is in spite of me using profanity, the channel grew significantly as you can see it jumped went here went here that was actually a crazy storage wars thing that made that big spike i remember that and i'm kind of here so for all of those folks who's like you know if you stop cussing you the channel grew in spite of that and also another reason i'm doing this graphic is you can be your fucking self and still be successful you don't have to be like me. You don't have to be like the other guy. You don't have to be like the other chick. You can be whoever the fuck that you are and still be successful. And anyone that wants to say profanity doesn't pay, I have two words for you. Howard Stern. Biggest radio contract ever. All right, now let's jump to the video. We're really going to go deep in this one. So hold on a sec. What's going on, people? As you saw with the graphic, which I know is in the video this time, it's actually in the video, that you could be yourself and still be successful. You don't have to be like anyone else. There are many people that want me to tone down the fucking profanity. And I'm not, because that's who I am. I've dated chicks who were like, hey, stop cussing so much. I'm like, hey, this is who it is. This is what it is. And if you don't like it, go away. And they went away. Oh, well. <laughs> if you don't like profanity, you don't like being told the fucking truth. You don't like someone saying, you know, the reason that you're not successful isn't because God doesn't love you. It's because you spend too much fucking time watching television. You spend too much time trying to entertain yourself or distract yourself. But... That's not the subject of this video. And just for those of you who missed it, if you want to be part of the Hustler of Hustler University, the price goes up Monday. Hit the first link below, you get the deal. Just letting you know. And with that, 
Let's jump into it. How does one develop a money mindset? This video is coming because of a comment I saw and I actually posted it in Hustle U University because someone was talking about the inner game and mindset, that's all good. But the problem with entrepreneurship is you people like tell me how to do it and give me executable steps. Now, I get that, but see, this is the problem. When people go to medical school and learn how to be a surgeon, they pay to be told how to do it. Many people out there in YouTube land, Facebook land, whatever, want someone to tell them exactly what to do, how to do it, and they don't want to pay. Thrift Quest. If you don't know him, check out his channel. He's got the beast mode. The dude is really trying to kill it out there. He put out on his page how that, you know, he had stopped doing, you know, hauls and prices and people started to dislike this dude. He's one of the most benign, not starting any trouble, real respectful dudes. And they were disliking him because when he would put up his videos, he wasn't giving out as much information, which he was doing a privilege, it was as a privilege to the people who were getting it. You weren't paying him. You're not his friend. You're not even giving him a cupcake. You're not nothing. And he did it out the goodness of his heart and he was roasted for it. Think about that. And you know, I commented, it's like, you know, luxury once tasted become necessities. People get addicted to that stuff. So many people feel entitled and I'm going to wrap this up and we'll connect how that mindset fucks up your money mindset. They feel entitled to great information and they don't want to pay for it. There is this video out and I'm going to do another video completely about it, but this just talks about people pay more attention to information that they pay for than information they get for free. And I'm going to tell you it's a hundred percent true for most people. Why? If you go on this channel, and go to the older videos. You go from 2009 up to around end of 2011, beginning of 2012. There's tons of videos with great content, tell you what to buy, how it goes down, give you storage charge and gain, all kinds of stuff. It just takes you sitting in your on your ass and watching the videos. But that takes a commitment. That takes an attention span. They don't want that. People want, I don't want to watch the video. I want you to give me bullet points, one, two, three, and I want you to charge me too much if you charge. I'm not, I'm cool with paying some, but you know, a dollar or two, that's good enough for you. And you know, break it down for me. Now, this is why you don't have any money. And this is why you're broke because to develop the money mindset absolutely has nothing to do with money. See, that's where you're going wrong. When I say, chasing money for the sake of chasing money. And I'll give you a prime example. Now, a lot of people don't get this because there was a group of trolls and evil people and very unsuccessful mean people. And it's like, you know, Glenda's a great storyteller. And some people didn't get it. There are TED Talks on the power of telling stories because they resonate with people. I noticed early on, the more stories that I told about the storage auction business, the more books I sold. It's called indirect selling. It, the book purchases were a byproduct of telling the stories. And none of those people were able to figure it out. And this is what it told me. They've never watched a TED talk. They've never really studied marketing. They just looked at, I don't like Glendon's stories. Therefore, that person and that person and that person and that person and those folks over there, they shouldn't either because I'm super intelligent and says, I don't like Glendon's stories. They shouldn't like it. They're boo boo the fool for listening to that guy because I don't like it. And I'm saying that for a reason because as a business owner, you have to take yourself out of the equation on some things. I have sold so many things that I thought were butt ugly, couldn't stand, shit wouldn't be in my house, but it made money because someone else liked it. And see, that's the whole thing. When you tell stories, when you create an emotional response, you move people in a certain place. And that's what happened. That's why there's so many storage auction stories. Because I know one day I had something to do 
And I said, God, I need my videos to go out. So I made like 10 videos in one day. And I released like five. And I went away, went out of town, came back, and I had a ton of sales. And, you know, I was like, you tell stories, you get sales. Connect the dots. It was real easy for me because I pay attention to those things. But for those of you who are on the outside looking in, you don't see all this stuff. All it's like, because you're not a business person or you don't understand marketing. You don't understand a lot of things. And understand, I don't follow all the rules of marketing because some of that shit I don't believe in and I think it's counterproductive and I tested it and it doesn't work for me. I Meaning it doesn't work for me. It may work for you, but it doesn't work for me and I don't like it, so I'm not going to do it anymore. Like, you know, giving stuff away for free for like a whole summer. I gave a ton of shit away for free. You know what happened? My overall monthly sales went down and they stayed down. They did not go up. And there's many people who's like, well, you give stuff for for free and then they'll buy. A small smidgen of people will buy. The internet has conditioned people to get stuff for free and expect top quality, perfect craftsmanship for little or nothing. And if they don't get it, they ball up their little fists and scream like babies. Ah! <laughs> but this is true. But with the money mindset, you have to think of larger principles the Google take Google Google main purpose was not to get rich their purpose their mission statement was to index the world they want to catalog every piece of information in the world every book every that's their goal and along the way of chasing that larger dream that larger goal they made a shitload of money Steve Jobs same thing. They made extremely expensive, but very elegantly and elegantly looking, simple to use computers. More expensive than, you know, IBM compatibles. Market share went crazy for a while. Made a lot of money, but their whole goal wasn't to make money. Their goal was to make something better and the money was a byproduct of the larger goal. So if you're not making money, you're chasing money directly, which will put some ducats in your pocket here and there. But without the larger goal, the minute that you stop working is the minute the money stops coming in. Because I, one of the reasons that I am really on the internet, the old, the creator mindset is there's been times that I stopped working and my income kept coming in. You know, when my partner died, I was like not worthless for about six months. I didn't do shit for six months. Really did. Made the most money I ever made doing this because you, it's a system. You know, when you do this type of thing, you create a system that creates income whether you're there or not. But for the how to develop the money mindset, you have to sit down and think. Number one. What can I do, create, or be that serves a lot of people? Give you another example. People whine, bitch about athletes' money. I have no apprehensions, reservations about some quarterback getting a hundred million. It doesn't bother me at all. Because, see, this is the thing. You see an athlete and you feel that a teacher or someone else who has a more valuable job should make equivalent money. And that's bullshit for this reason. When you saw Joe Montana do that crazy thing, it was magical. And it stayed with you for years. There are still people that when they relive that game, being with their friends, those moments, they're priceless. Now, he didn't do that for one person. He did that for millions. Aaron Rodgers, all of these guys that inspire people when they make these plays and you're you're a fan and you feel all good. You're inspired. They inspire more people in a Sunday than a teacher will do in a lifetime. Serious. All of these guys who are coming up in the NFL who are going straight from college to starting and performing at a high level were inspired by those guys. They're everywhere. The new quarterback, mark my words, five years from now, every quarterback is going to be an option type quarterback. He will be able to throw with pinpoint accuracy and run his ass off. Not because 
you know, it's a fancy thing. It's going to be required. You're going to have to be that way to play in the NFL. The pure pocket pastor. Andrew Luck's not the fastest dude in the world, but he can molder when he has to. Ben Rochester, he looks like, you know, a tree. But when he, you know, when he was younger, when he had the molder, he would mess you up. It's like, how does something that big move that fast? That's going to be the norm. So understand, if you want to get money, think of something else first. Think of a larger purpose first. Think of something that serves a lot of people. Restaurants, Waffle House, menu has not changed significantly in, since I've heard of them. They serve the same stuff all the time, but they serve it to a lot of people every day. Many people have this note that I'm going to go out and make this million dollar burger or this $250 meal. And understand there are restaurants and chefs who are very successful with that business model. But to do that, you can't have that $25 burger in a neighborhood where the $5 burger is the norm. It's not going to work. You have to move to a neighborhood where there's other $25 burgers for people to do that. So understand developing the money mindset creates it takes a certain level of creativity it takes looking at making money as a byproduct of making something else that's one of the reasons that i have traded my life in you know i was a resale person storage auction person i have traded that in on a different model the creator model because I can serve way more people doing this than I ever could doing the storage auction thing. Way more people, consistently. I feel that I've just scratched the surface with this stuff because the ability and the opportunity to serve a lot of people is crazy, crazy. It's just crazy what you can do when you're operating as a media person versus a business one-off person. And if you look at the larger companies, the same thing is what, scale and volume, scale and volume. How many people can you serve and how fast and efficiently can you serve them? That's where the money is in the infrastructure. It's not in quote, the product itself. It's in how you deliver, manufacture, ship, market the product. It's the infrastructure is more important than the product because you got the bomb product, right? It's great, but it costs too much. It's hard to ship. Not too many people want it. It's not going to make you a lot of money for the people who buy it and love it. It's awesome. But that's not going to make you a lot of money because you're serving a segmented market. Which, once again, there are many people that do that, but they're all high end. The Cartiers of the world, the Rolls Royce of the world, Porsche. But even at that level, they still sell a lot of cars. I mean, they don't sell as many Porsches as, you know, you will see Toyota Tercels or whatever, Corollas. I think the Corolla's still around. But they may sell one car and make as much money selling that one car as Toyota makes selling 25 to Corollas. So, you know, you got to really look at that. You got to look at it totally different than I want someone to give me a technique to make money because I, I want you to really believe in this. When you get to the point where you develop the hustler mindset, a creative mindset, and you start serving people and you stop looking at money directly, it's like, hey, how, how can I get more value? How can I pack it? Like this new deal that I packed together. I mean, it's ridiculous. You get not one, two t-shirts, 130, 130 hours of content for 200 bucks. It's a crazy mad deal. And there's still people going, man, that's too much. Can you bring that down to 50? Bring it down to 50, I'm in. And see, there's two groups of people with price point methodology like that. I'm broke as shit and 50 is all I can afford. And then there's other people with money. They're just cheap as hell. I don't really want to deal with either one for the following reason. Because we're incompatible. In my mind, and I don't have it here. It's in my car. I was at a point where I was damn near destitute. No, I should have was destitute. And I still scratched up some coin to get Earl Nightingale Lee DeVille from Nightingale Conat with shipping and everything and other books I got. It's like $150. 
This was in the 90s. I was making two, maybe 250 a week. So I spent almost a week income on one thing. But I was looking at the value. I wasn't looking at the price. I was looking at the value. If you don't know how to understand value and you're always on price, you're going to have problems. Walmart's having that problem right now. And they're not going out of business no time soon. Don't, don't, don't even believe that. But they're having a problem because they sold on price and squeezing their vendors and squeezing their manufacturers and wringing out all the profit to there's not a lot of more not a lot of room. And then Target went in the other direction. We're not going to play that low ball game with you because you're the best in the world and we can't compete with you there. What we're going to do is create better infrastructure. We're going to put our stores in certain neighborhoods and we're going to create a more robust delivery system. And we're going to focus on design. We're going to focus on that you can come to our store, not spend a lot of money and make your home look like a designer showcase. From the soap dispensers to the thing that you the dishwasher look at, they put a tremendous amount of effort and money into design, packaging, with affordability. And the stock price is going up. Market share is going up because they figured out another way to serve a lot of people in a different manner. So that's, whole, that's the whole money mindset. If you can serve a lot of people, you can make a lot of money. If you only going to serve a certain segment, because that's one of the reasons that I rebranded this channel to how to make a living without a job. And I'm going to do more stuff like that because there are way more people interested in that niche than how to go running through storage units. It's a special person who can go through storage units because it's hard, hard work. And another thing about that, when I started this channel, I didn't lie to anyone. You know, there were some people like, well, if you don't tell people it's that hard, I must admit, I'm going to tell people because I found myself in so many situations that was just crazy. You buy a unit and in the back's like six refrigerators. They don't work. You can't throw a refrigerator away. I mean, storage units present so many freaking challenges and problems that you must solve that half of my life as a storage unit person was about solving problems. I mean, seriously, it's like you, you, you buy a unit. There's a bedroom set in there. There's the dresser, there's two nightstands, there's the headboard, there's the footboard, there's no rails. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go buy one of these metal rails and I'm gonna drill some holes. And that's what I did the first time. I got really good at drilling holes and creating seated screws where you could just screw it in and it still looked all sexy and pretty. But I had to do that to make money because I don't know how many times I bought a unit with a sofa and the cushions were not in there. And I called up, you know, to have one sofa cushion made could be like 150 bucks to have it really made well and it matched the rest of the sofa. It was untenable to go out and have cushions made. So what did we do? If we had a really nice sofa, this is what we did. I would see units out there and I was like, God, that sofa has some nice legs. So we would take the legs from another sofa. We'll take the cushions if it matched or fit because, you know, everything's different. And we would re just do the sofa and make it look like a designer piece with the big turn legs and the sofa sat high. And I remember one lady who came in and she was actually not even interested in buying anything. And she was sitting on the sofa and her daughter was running around the warehouse and the door was getting ready to leave. And then she got up and she said, oh, my, I need this at my house. And I said, why? She said, my sofa's so low and it just hurts. This I can get up and down really easy. Next thing I know, five minutes later, she bought it. Why? It solved a need. It solved a purpose. She wasn't there looking for a sofa. But when she saw that sofa made her life easier, she had no problem pulling out her Platinum American Express and buying that bad boy. None whatsoever. And we delivered it that day. So understand, serve people. Serve a lot of people, you'll make a lot of money. As long as you're in what I call constricted theory, I'm only going to do so much. I'm only going to put so much money at risk. Your rewards will mirror your efforts. Pretty much. I mean, I learned a lot from the storage auction business, how to really do stuff. Like right now, I'm uh, testing T-shirts. 
people are laughing and mark my words those t-shirts are going to be damn successful if i have to make you know i'm up to like what 25 designs and most of them are like they suck you know because i don't design t-shirts and they suck now but going back to the graphic that i showed you at the beginning of this video i didn't do that well in the first year on youtube that's why I laugh my ass silly when I see people whining who've only been on YouTube six months. They're whining. They feel entitled to have a certain viewership. They feel entitled to have a certain subscriber count. They feel entitled. They haven't earned it, and they're looking at it the wrong way. Every time that I did something that worked, I repeated. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. That's what you do. But there's so many people who have the entitlement mindset. And when you use that term, people are like, that's very Republican. No, that's very American. There are many Americans who feel extremely entitled to have stuff, whether they earned it or not. Whether it's YouTube views or a nice house or a nice job. Because, you know, my mama told me I was special. But reality is saying, motherfucker, you ain't special because you don't have the skills to pay the bills. And that's what's happening to a lot of people. Have a degree and they're working at Starbucks and I'm not hating on someone working at Starbucks, but I don't think anyone got into $100,000 worth of student loan debt to work at Starbucks. I don't think that was the plan. And there's a lot of people who are, I'm, not, I'm gonna do a more factual video on that because I found some great resources that are gonna help me out with that. Because with my social experiment, which is still going on, I'm gonna let it go on for another week or so. I, it's just people are not looking at the facts. They're looking at their feelings going to Dan Early's predictably irrational. That's how you get got with marketing, because a lot of times you don't make decisions based on fact. You make decisions based on feeling more often than you believe. So understand if you want to develop a money mindset, you must first develop a service mindset. Develop the certain, you know, start thinking, like, what can I do to serve a lot of people? Not, what can I do to make a lot of money? <laughs> my goal was, my first year as a writer, the deal with the universe was, if I could make 50 G's, I was going to keep on. I uh, kicked that in the ass by 12 G's. My goal was 50, but because I was trying to serve as many people as possible, I overshot it. And then the next year I did better because I was serving more people. And that's the whole thing. Think, how many people can you serve? That's one of the reasons that I closed the Hustler Mindset Project down and I'm working on Hustler University because it serves more people. The Hustler Mindset Project isn't for everyone and actually having Hustler University as a feeder system to the Hustler Mindset Project gives me a time to evaluate the person and it gives the person time to evaluate me. And it's a better fit and it's just going to work better and it's going to be more powerful, more beneficial. It's going to help more people that way. And that's my journey because going back to the original graphic, which I put there for a reason, there was a long time that I did not do very well on YouTube. A long time. And once again, I giggle my ass silly when someone's been on YouTube for four months, six months, and they're whining and bitching because of the shit that goes on. You ain't seen nothing yet. Stick around for four to five years to see what happens to your janky ass. If you make it that long, and most of you won't. There are original YouTube partners that were doing well because of all the changes. They're saying, fuck this, and they're getting out of here. It's about adaptation and innovation. Either you're going to adapt and innovate or you're not going to be around. And when I turn this ship, you know, I lost a lot of people and I knew it was going to happen. I actually was in the storage auction thing for like two years longer than I thought I would be. I was amazed. But I knew at some point it was going to end and I was prepared for it. That's another thing that happens to the entrepreneurs. It's like, oh, this is good. You get used to it being all good and cozy and you get comfortable. Next thing you know, the car won't start. There's no gas in it because you forgot to fill it up. But with developing the money you know, mindset, service, 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 service. Once again, for those who did not hear me, 
to develop the money mindset service 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 because if you create great service the money will come as a byproduct now there's some other nuances because there are many musicians who create a great product but because of cultural sanctions and cultural norms that money that music shouldn't be that expensive that they kind of have a hard way to go but now there's a lot of ways that they can make money from their service because the interrupt the internet has disrupted so many things but Think service. Think what can you do to serve a lot of people and you'll be on the right path to developing the money set because once the service is there, the money will come. The greater your service, the greater the money. I've seen it when we did the dollar section. It was 4,000 square feet. Everything in there was a dollar. Sometimes there were microwaves in there. And sometimes my partner was like, God, that can man. I was like, we got six of those this week. We're not going to sell all six at even five bucks. Put it in a dollar section. And that was the churn and burn section. Anything that we got repeatedly over and over again, microwaves, irons, uh, curling irons, uh, the ornaments for curtains, uh, curtain bra and all that stuff that we got over and over and over where it stacked up faster. You can sell it, blow it out. And stuff that we didn't get that frequently, that was really nice, it went in other sections. But the biggest section is the dollar section because you get that stuff all the time. So, but to my original point, that section served a lot of people. They wouldn't come in there and spend a dollar. I would see families loading up. I would see people taking sheets, putting them on the floor and throwing stuff in there and like, okay, I got 90 pieces. Will you take 70 bucks? Sure, because I was gonna throw that shit away. Of course I'll take your $70. Thank you. I'll even help you take it to your car. Oh, you've got four bags. You got 80 pieces? 50 bucks. Give it to me. See you next time. It saved me so many trips to the dump, so many trips to Goodwill, because they would get it. And I started making deals. People come in there and it's like, hey, you can take that whole corner for 100 bucks. Because I knew that on the truck, I had the same stuff again. It made no sense to hold on to that stuff. But people get this tunnel vision. It's worth this. It's going to sell for this. The internet says it's going to sell for what the public said, will, what the public will pay for it at that particular time that you want to sell, which may be higher. Which usually it's going to be lower than what you want. That's how it is. That's how it is. So understand in developing that money mindset, you must first develop the service mindset and the money will come. All right, this is Glendon Cameron and I'll see you on the good side. Be sure to join the Hustler University email list. It's right below because I'm just sending out offers. If you're on that list, you get special offers, special deals and stuff like that. And you'll be good. You'll, you'll be glad you joined it. Trust me, you would. You really would. All right, this is Glendon. See you on the good side.